Wait, so you're telling me it used to be the H500, it went to the H510, and now it's the H5? I don't know about this, guys. So first we got the Flow. And then there's the Elite. At least there's some consistency, you know? Let us see what is new. The mesh looks familiar. No freaking way, they finally expanded the top section. But man, now this thing looks like every other mid tower. Until we come to the shroud part, which has dedicated fans for the GPU that is angled. Very excited to test this out, but check this out. Oof, that does not sound good. And without the back panel. Yep, much better. Either my floor is uneven or this thing is. What happened to NZXT? I don't wanna say they stopped trying, but the H5 Flow, for $95, let's check out the type of quality you get. Such lovely vibrations, huh? This is because the side panel is not actually held in by anything at the front, it's only secured by two thumb screws at the back. That's not enough to hold this very thin and flimsy sheet piece of metal. No thumb screws on any of the non-ventilated PCI brackets and I absolutely hate this type of mount. They've removed the crap hard drive cage from here. Now we have this beautiful fan shroud, but at the compromise of slightly less storage capacity. This storage bracket at the back can do dual SSDs, so one here, one beside it, or single SSD and a single hard drive. Now the single hard drive does extend beyond the CPU cutout, just something to keep in mind. I still don't like, we only get a single USB-A port. And I am questioning the usefulness of this bottom angled fan for the, mainly for GPU cooling, just because we have no other intake at the front. So we'll see what the temperatures give us. I cannot believe they have not changed this front fan bracket. Sure, it can accommodate up to a 280ml radiator, but it is not reversible. So if you're doing any sandwich style, it's just a little bit more challenging to install. Uh, it can only be removed from the interior of the case, so if you have anything populated, it makes it a bit more difficult. And having all this additional space at the front, it would have been perfect to have the bracket have the option to install from the front as well, just to simplify installation. But nope. Cable management has been improved. They've removed that plastic cable guide from previous models, which I didn't mind. Now it's been just basically simplified. Okay. The build quality, unfortunately, is absolutely disappointing. Flimsy metal, everything's rattling, it doesn't have the premium feel, and even though the original H500 was a $69 case with the orange peel paint, you could bypass that because it was so, you know, affordable and budget territory. This, on the other hand, is entering that premium category with so much competition, I really hope this fan shroud can do the job. But it's not all downhill. Here's some interesting things on the H5 Flow. The magnets on the dust filter are properly spaced out to accommodate screws going into the mounting holes. And the filter is symmetrical, so you don't have to worry about installing it wrong. In fact, all of our intake filters are the high density, high airflow filters that are easily removable for cleaning. And because of the additional intake fan at the bottom, that also has a filter, just like the one for the power supply. You can mount a 240 radiator at the top that is nicely offset closer to the side panel, giving you enough clearance away from the motherboard. And it's also away from the rear fan, so you can still mount the radiator with the tubes facing either the back or the front, so that's without issues. But no 140 millimeter fan mounts. What if I just want to mount the fans in here for exhaust, for example? I have to stick to 120s. That is a downside. I would say the chassis design has aged well. It's a nice, compact, handsome mid-tower, uh, but not that much different from the original H500 in 2014. Eight years! The RGB fans on the Elite model are very pretty. They're also 140 millimeters for that additional airflow. And notice there's this metal lip on the front TG panel to separate between what's being taken up by the front fans versus what's being taken up by the bottom. I also find it quite strange that on the Elite model, we only have the RGB controller. That's sole purpose is for illumination control of those two front fans. There is no other illumination on this case, and you have to plug in the fans to your motherboard for fan RPM. Whereas previously, everything was connected to the case hub. Removing the fan shroud to, let's say, replace the fan is fairly straightforward. It's just held in by two screws in the back, but no way to take it off. You need to remove the front panel, which again is one of those annoying things. And only then you can take this out. 
I don't know, I feel like this rebrand of the H500 series, you know, there's some changes, but I don't think they're enough. And they've never been enough with new iteration of the H500. The H510 wasn't enough, the H510 Flow, sure, they could have just released a mesh panel, and now it's the same thing without the drive cage and with the fan shroud for bottom intake for the GPU cooling. So let's hope that delivers on cooling performance right after this. Oh yes, I've always wanted to be inside one of these 27 inches of pure Dimitri Pixels. You can kind of see into my soul. Oh, what's this behind me? Just a 576 mini LED zone for gorgeous exposure and <laughs> HDR performance with the 1200 nit peak brightness. Feel the immersion in reality with the new 4K 160Hz mini LED monitor, the Cooler Master GP27U, bringing everything to life. Okay, so after completing the temperature testing, something weird is happening with the H5 Flow. The angled shroud fan isn't doing as much as I thought it would be. So looking at CPU temperatures, you can see the H5 Flow versus the H510 Flow. There's quite a big difference in CPU temperatures, right? Interestingly, both the H5 Flow and the H5 Elite stay at that 79 degrees Celsius and temperatures do not change even if I turn off the fan. But if I relocate that fan, to intake from the front, like the H510 would, we get to that same result, pretty much uh, lowering the temperatures a little bit on the CPU side. If you're wondering why the temperatures on the Elite are so bad, it's exactly what we're expecting because of this tempered glass panel. You know, despite the fans being good, although quite loud at full speed, this ventilation on the side is not enough. And look at how much we drop in temperatures on the CPU when we take off that front glass panel. So yes, the, man, this thing is quite uh, an airflow barrier for sure. But when you move on to the GPU side, things get really weird with temperatures. So by default, it's stock configuration with that angled shroud fan on the H5 flow. The GPU is much, much hotter than on the H510 flow. Even though I can feel a column of air moving towards the GPU, we have a non-ventilated power supply shroud that contributes to perhaps more heat generated in that space. The PCIe brackets are not ventilated either. So perhaps again, there is this like hot pocket that just cannot be removed simply by that one exhaust fan at the back. And even when I relocate the shroud fan to the front to mimic an H510 flow configuration, we do lower on the GPU temperatures, but not that significant. So by design, this chassis and this frame is more airflow restrictive than the previous H510 flow. And so by that, I really hope that the H510 flow doesn't go out of production because I mean, it is a better performing chassis. The Elite is also quite disappointing on the GPU side simply because we have good hardware for intake. Those fans are capable in terms of CFM and static pressure, but the chassis is way too restrictive for the front and that tiny ventilation strip on the side does no justice for CPU and GPU temperatures. Now to say these new H5 cases hit like a sweet mid spot is going to be a mistake. Neither are the CPU nor the GPU temperatures are impressive. And overall, <laughs> it's the same thing with a fan shroud that does not perform better for GPU temperatures with my configuration. And actually relocating that fan to the front gives me better performance. Still not as good though as the previous H510 flow and that is a huge compromise. The flow for the $95 price point feels overpriced because the build quality is just not there. The top configuration, like sure, you can mount two 120 mil fans or a 240 radiator. Cool, welcome to 2022, my friends. This thing at $69 would be competitive. $79 maybe, but 95, absolutely not wait for sale. The $140 price point for the Elite, whew, it's the exact same chassis, everything still rattles just as much. It doesn't feel as premium as it should for that price point. The fans are fancy, of course, the tempered glass is cool, but ventilation isn't. And the RGB controller is a downgrade. We used to be able to plug everything into the controller for both uh, uh, fan configuration in terms of RPM and lighting, but not anymore. So my alternative recommendations to these cases would be the previous H510 flow, performance better, you have more storage capacity, uh, or the Corsair 4000D, absolutely love that case, still use it as my main, it has better airflow and it's 
uh, much better build quality. It feels like a really wholesome experience. The Fractal Design Torrent series is approaching the elite price point, but in terms of uh, airflow performance is leaps ahead and is actually leading the pack. And the Lenko 3, if all you're looking for is an absolute ton of features and a future bulletproof chassis. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the new H5 Flow and Elite from NZXT, and I'll talk to you in the next video.